We're joined now by Denver Riggleman, a former Republican congressman from Virginia who served as a senior technical advisor to the committee until April. And he's also the author of The Breach, the untold story of the investigation into January 6th. Thank you so much for joining us, Denver. Thanks for, thanks for having me. We saw that major development with the committee voting to subpoena former President Trump. How significant is that action in your mind? And, and how do you think the former president will respond? You know, I might have a different way of looking at this. So, uh, you know, I don't don't want to be negative anyway, but I think the committee had already proven, you know, that the lunatics were running the asylum, right? When you're looking at, you know, the evidence from the, the legal evidence that they had, the legislative evidence that they had, and what was happening in the executive branch. I think, you know, with the data and the facts, um, I think it's completely appropriate uh, to talk to the former president, but I think I would have done a subpoena uh, much before now. Was there any advantage, do you think, for them waiting until the end? Why wouldn't they have had this vote earlier on? I'm not quite sure. You know, uh, you know, for me, you know, the data and the facts that they had, you know, some have been there for, for quite some time. You know, being this close to the midterms uh, in the last hearing, um, I think that I would have wanted to know, you know, what the president said earlier. It could be that they thought it might be a distraction earlier on, uh, but I think this also, too. So you're really in a maybe in a lose-lose situation. But at this point, the evidence has been so compelling. Um, it, it could really give a boost to certain elements of the GOP based on how they message, fundraise, or even what the polling looks like. So again, not, you know, not trying to, to poop at what the committee's done, but I, but I think this was maybe the right thing to do, but at the wrong time. Any sense if, if at all, any inkling that, that the president would actually show up, the former president would actually show up? No. Well, I don't, no, he's not going to show up. I mean, what he's going to do, the consultants are going to look at the polling. They're going to look at the generic polling for the GOP across the country, which has gone up. They're going to look where the economy is. Uh, they're going to look at the top issues across the board and where they can look. And if he were to all of a sudden say, hey, I'm ready to do this, my guess is they would wait till after the midterms to see how many seats they took, uh, you know, in the House of Representatives or if they were able to wrest control back in the Senate also. So, you know, it's been 15 months since the committee came on board, so I think this was good if this was their last hearing. It's been almost two years since the 2020 election, what, 20 to 21 months since January 6th. You know, I think we're, we're on the downslope uh, where the committee has absolutely proven to the public trust that President Trump or the people around him should never serve again. Uh, and I think it's now the DOJ and the FBI who needs to look more at the technical link connections, you know, what happened at the right-wing extremist level with rally planners and things of that nature. And we also saw, of course, those dramatic images showing congressional leaders fleeing the mob and assembling at a secure location off Capitol Hill. As a former member of Congress, what went through your mind as you watched these scenes play out? Was, you know, a lot of good people running, you know, and, and not actually knowing what the ground game looked like. But you know what I thought about today was the United States Secret Service text, right, and the failure uh, in the communications, operations, logistics, and intelligence you know, to protect law enforcement on the ground. And whether it was Secret Service or the United States Capitol Police, intelligence, or, you know, the leadership there, or even the political appointees, you know, on the Senate and the House side from McConnell and Pelosi, there were massive failures uh, at every level that put, you know, those law enforcement individuals on the ground in danger. And that's really, you know, something that, um, that affected me. Uh, and when you look at the congressional representatives, not knowing what was going on, it was because of those failures. Do you feel that the committee has been effective at connecting the dots? Uh, and, and I'm curious also if you have any concerns about leads that may not have been followed or work that still needs to be done by the committee. You know, the, the job was Herculean. And I think they did a fantastic job of presenting what was happening that day, especially, you know, it's a military term, you know, but uh, dereliction of duty. Uh, by President Trump or, you know, looking at how they tried to obstruct con Congress that day. It's been a great job. But really that second, third and fourth level needs to be fleshed out more. And I think especially with the what I call command and control um, or the coordination that was happening between multiple groups, you know, whether it was right wing, right wing extremists or, you know, it was rally planners that were, you know, in coordination with them, maybe directly or only one link removed. And also there's White House links, right? But with the thousands of interviews and what the committee was able to do over these 15 months, they've certainly proven uh, that President Trump is unfit to hold office again. Denver Riggleman, our thanks to you as always. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.